TV for run and sprint. And before we start, I have got a couple of jokes for you. So first of all, what is brown and hairy and wears sunglasses? Any idea? I can't hear you. It is a coconut on vacation. Okay, second joke is why does a seagull fly over the sea and not the bay? Because it would be a bagel, not a seagull. So they are the jokes, and now we are going to go into a time of worship. Hello, Care of Kids. I'm so excited to be worshiping with you today because we're going to sing about how Jesus makes us so brave. So please sing with me. I stand before you now The greatness of your renown I have heard of the majesty and wonder of you King of heaven in humility I bow And as your love in wave after wave crashes over me crashes over me for you are for us you are not against us champion of heaven you made a way for all to I have heard you call in my name. I have heard the song of love that you sing. So, oh, I will let you draw me out beyond the shore into your grace.
Hello again. Hi there. I'm Ben. I am from our Bracknell site. It's so good to be back with you. Do you remember last week we were learning about a guy called Nehemiah? And Nehemiah was sad when we first met him. And he did a few things with his sadness. He wept, he cried, and sat down for a few days mourning about it. He couldn't eat. He lost his appetite. He was so sad. But the most important thing that he did was that he prayed. He talked to God about his sadness, about how he felt. Now you may remember Nehemiah was a long way from home. He was working for a foreign king who forced him, along with all of his people, to live with him hundreds of miles away from their home city. And the reason Nehemiah was sad was because some friends had come and told him from his home city that the home city was in trouble. The defensive walls around the city had been broken down and they were vulnerable to attack. That's why he was sad. So what happens next? And now that Nehemiah has talked to God about it, what's God going to say back to Nehemiah? What on earth might happen next? The problem is still there, even though Nehemiah now feels a lot better because he's talked to God. There still is this problem of the city being in trouble. What's he going to do? Let's read again in our Bibles. If uh, you're going to pause this video for just a moment whilst you find your Bible uh, or an app with the Bible on it, and find the book of Nehemiah again. If you can pause for as long as you like, so if you haven't read chapter one already uh, of Nehemiah, why don't you do that? But then move on to chapter two to find out what happens next. Nehemiah is in the Old Testament section of our Bibles. It's about a third of the way through, uh, and it's really good that the guy who wrote it put his name to it as well, so we can find it and remember it really easily. So we're looking for Nehemiah, and today we're gonna to read to the end of chapter two. See you in a minute. Hey, welcome back. If you've read chapter two, wow, wasn't that amazing? Nehemiah got permission from the king to leave his job, take a bunch of people with him uh, and a whole load of stuff with him and letters of permission and so on to go and start rebuilding those broken down walls. How did that happen? Goodness me, that's crazy. It was certainly a scary moment for Nehemiah. He was still sad in the presence of the king and the king asked him, what the problem was and what he wanted to do about it. And Nehemiah, we know it says he was really scared because if the king didn't like your answer in those days and in that place, you could be killed. You could be punished. Who knows what might happen? So Nehemiah finds himself in this place where he thinks he knows what God wants him to do. He, he thinks the idea to help fix this problem in his home city of Jerusalem he thinks God's given him that idea. So on the one hand, he wants to do what God is asking him to do. But on the other hand, he's got this king who might say no, who might endanger him for selling the truth, for saying what it is that he thinks God wants him to do. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like God had asked you to do something, but it was going to be hard? It was going to be tough and you weren't quite sure how it was going to work out. What do you do when something seems scary like that? It can be so tough. Maybe God's asked you to stand up to a bully. That would be tough. Or maybe to help or be kind to someone who's not popular in your school. Or maybe to be a friend to someone who isn't in your normal group. Those are hard things to do. It's hard to do what God 
wants us to do sometimes. And Nehemiah found it hard too. Well, he prayed again. He prayed when he was sad, and now he prays again when he's scared. He's, we don't know what exactly he prayed. Maybe he just said, please God, help me. It's a really good prayer to pray. And then he asked the king. He asked the king for all that he needed. I need some time off work. I need to be able to travel. I need a letter of permission. I need a, a group of people to come with me. Can I have all those things, please? Well, we can do that with God too, you know. Another follower of Jesus, a guy called Paul, put it like this. He said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. It's amazing, isn't it? I wonder what God is asking you to do this week. Ask God what that might be and talk to him about what you might need to do it as we consider these questions together. learn about how Nehemiah, how he built a wall. And I've been looking into some world records and I think there's one that I think I could possibly beat, but I'm gonna need your help at home. So you need to cheer, lead me on. I need you to hear, like cheer, lead me on nice and loudly. But the record is, is to build a tower with Lego only using one hand and the record is 35 in 30 seconds. So do you think I could beat it? Do you think? Okay, it's nice and loud. I think I could beat it. So but I've got to do it with one hand. So, someone count me down. Go with three, two, one, go. Ah, no. Okay, this looks, this looks so much easier to do, but it's really difficult, and I don't get how many of my admitted and how we did this, because, okay, Jesus, and God, I need you. This is how many of my built the wall up. I need your strength, because I can't do this by myself, and it, it's just Oh no! Okay, maybe I can't do this. Oh no! Stop! Here is my finished attempt. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Well, it was it was an attempt. Maybe you can do this at home. Maybe you can be the thirty-five. Let me know. But we'll see you very soon. Oh.